to the other side of the studio because James Creedon joins us now for uh, Media Watch. Hi, Nadia. Hello. Uh, and you've been looking for us then on what is our, our top story uh, this hour. Emmanuel Macron belatedly uh, breaking his silence over that scandal uh, surrounding his former uh, bodyguard, speaking then to members of his own party, uh, La République En Marche. That's right. It's been five, six days. People have been waiting for some sort of a, a, a remark from Emmanuel Macron. There have been some direct indirect comments from his entourage, but nothing really uh, dealing with the heart of the matter. Mm. This evening, he did speak to MPs from his LREM party, La République En Marche. And I suppose the main quote that's coming out of that meeting, because journalists were present, Le Monde notably, uh, uh, very quickly, uh, they actually broke the story, the scandal of the video showing his bodyguard slash close collaborator uh, dressed as a police officer on the 1st of May and being extremely heavy handed uh, in a way that is almost certainly illegal. And there's been a parliamentary inquiry since. And he says the only person responsible for this is me. Um, I trusted uh, Alexandre Benalla and this trust was betrayed. And so that's kind of the key quote that is emerging and uh, it is getting a lot of response. I'll just kind of give some of the other quotes that came out of it as well, because it's all being uh, kind of catalogued here in at this live blog of Le Monde. French media are talking about little else, by the way. You have to really scroll down the page of news websites to get to any international news, which, you know, it, this is kind of preoccupying uh, a lot of people. He also said he spoke about the dignity of Gaulism. Now, a lot of this, there's been this parliamentary inquiry which a lot of opposition leaders are calling for the president to come and explain himself before this parliamentary inquiry. His own party has been saying that this is like a political tribunal. It's not a parliamentary inquiry. You have the likes of Marine Le Pen grilling uh, key people uh, in the inquiry. So his own uh, party uh, and the government do not want to see Emmanuel Macron go before this. And uh, even uh, the, the head of the far left party, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, is famously in favour of a sixth republic uh, more of a parliamentary system and is highly critical of Emmanuel Macron's more uh, monarchical uh, style of presidency. So when Emmanuel Macron speaks about the dignity of Gaullism, he's talking about uh, General de Gaulle who brought back, who brought in the Fifth Republic, which is monarchical. It is a strong presidency mm. which has elements of monarchy. So uh, if Emmanuel Macron is remaining quiet up to now and only speaking indirectly in this way. Uh, he's defending that here by saying this is dignified, it is the gaullist way of, of, uh, of ruling. Another quote that came out of that as well is, let them come and get me. Now he's talking there about opposition leaders who want him to come before the parliament. Uh, that has generated a certain amount of uh, reaction online. Uh, you can see there that qu'ils viennent me chercher, uh, let, them, let them come and get me. And uh, you, so you have kind of people here, uh, you know, sheriff, uh, sheriff kind of images uh, coming along, which I suppose isn't a million miles away from the notion of kind of a centralised monarchical. Anyway, others saying, uh, let them come and get me. Now, come on, Emmanuel, you should at least take an Uber. He has been sort of said to uh, be Uberizing the French economy. So I think that's a bit of, an, a, bit of a, a joke there. Uh, politicians also reacting, Eric Ciotti of Les Républicains. Macron has confirmed uh, what we have been saying since the beginning, and he is admitting that he's responsible for this uh, state scandal, the banana affair, as it's been known. Uh, become known as, uh, but he prefers to explain himself uh, in, in a small group, uh, a, a small cast, he says here, instead of giving explanations on front of the French people. Now, Emmanuel Macron did say uh, in that, uh, in that, um, uh, in the, the, those elements that have come out uh, to the media that he, 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 he will speak or that he, 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 it's on front of the French people that he owes uh, an explanation. So I suppose we can expect that he will speak at some point, perhaps when the noise dies down, perhaps when all of the parliamentary uh, interrogations and whatnot uh, and investigations calm down somewhat, that he will um, make at least concluding remarks. Uh, that's all we can say on it for that moment, for the moment. Now, of course, because he's remained so silent for so long, it has left an awful lot of space for speculation as to what the nature of the relationship was with Alexandre Benalla, at least a member of his inner circle, that's certainly cl clear. But actually, uh, he directly addressed uh, the notion that they might have some sort of romantic un entanglement. Uh, in this meeting today at uh, Maison de l'Amérique Latine with MPs, he said, and Le Monde is reporting it, uh, that he is not uh, my lover. And so that was a question actually that was asked by uh, a member of the public in this live blog in Le Monde and uh, the journalist said, well, actually, he did address that in a kind of an ironic way. Mm. Remembering during his um, election campaign as well, he also had to address similar rumours uh, about uh, whether or not he has uh, extramarital affairs and whether or not they might be with men. And he actually had to publicly address that during various uh, political rallies. And so this this is kind of coming back to haunt him now again, if you like, in the midst of the uh, Benalla uh, affair. Mm. Uh, now, the president... 
until we heard him speak today, uh, he'd been quiet on all forms of social media, including uh, on Twitter. But he did earlier on today tweet after a few days' absence, but not actually on the Benalla story itself. That's right. He did. For, this is the first time Emmanuel Macron's Twitter account went silent uh, for four or five days since the beginning of his presidency. He has tweeted every day on multiple uh, multiple times a day, indeed, uh, normal. Uh, it's become the new normal, I suppose. Uh, but because he broke his silence and it wasn't on the issue that everybody was expecting to hear him uh, on, uh, he, he, he did get some criticism for that as well. And if you look at the comments below uh, that tweet, they were all, you had fake Alexandre Benalla Twitter accounts replying. I mean, it was just a mess. But it's the same if you look at, I suppose, a lot of presidents and prime ministers' uh, Twitter accounts now. Uh, underneath it, it's, it's parody responses or extreme vulgarity. I mean, it's making political communications very difficult nowadays. And in, indeed, that's what a lot of the analysis has been saying, that this silence has left a space for speculation, perhaps ill-advised. Maybe he didn't have a choice, so seeing as there was such a drip, drip quality to the revelations over the past week, he didn't want to speak. Because the few times that comments were made by his spokespeople, um, it turned out that they were inaccurate and he, they were picked apart by journalists. So. Damned if you do and damned if you don't. Indeed, James. Thank you very much indeed. James Creed in there uh, picking apart our uh, top story uh, this hour on the programme, that scandal uh, regarding um, Macron's ex-bodyguard. Do stay with us.